Um, here, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is actually a really, this is the really nice thing that I'm going to be building in the book, and it actually has this kind of cool um, uh, scrolly feature here. Now, we don't, I don't call it a scrolly feature in the book, um, but I'm going to talk to you about how to build that today. And then one other thing is maybe uh, next week we're going to talk about how to do this, this sorting here. And the cool thing about this is that actually there's no VBA in it. Um, and it also used tables um, to some extent. But um, that'll be for our next episode. So this is just to give you a, um, a taste of things to come. But what we're going to be working with isn't going to look that good, unfortunately. So I hope that's OK with you all. Uh, basically, I have a set of um, data here. And I, I have these projects that I've called Project 1, 2, you know, all the way down to uh, 127. So I have um, three different, let's call them, variables, metrics, KPIs, call them whatever you want. You know, the thing about uh, these sorts of things in Excel are that, um, that uh, you know, reduced to its parts, it's all sort of the same thing. So this is really what they call weighted average model because we have these uh, weights up here, which add up to 100%. And over here in our structured reference, I'm going to hit F2 on that. It's going to show you that um, I can uh, multiply these uh, variables by these weights, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually fill in everything completely. So just to show you that really quickly, for those un unfamiliar with um, tables, if you've never seen this before, if you're of the 99%, although that does seem kind of small, here's the cool thing about tables. I type in the first one, I hit enter, automatically fills below. So this is, this is one of the really cool things about um, structured uh, references, and we'll be using that probably next week. So um, what we're going to work with today, uh, what we're going to work on today is how to build that scrolling feature. So the main uh, mechanism is this uh, form control score roll bar right here. And I'm just going to show you how to insert that real quick. Um, if you've never done it before, you're going to jump to the developer tab. And as you can see, some of these are lowercase and some of these are uppercase based off of that, um, that tip I gave you before where I was showing you how to make everything lowercase. And then I just, I just sort of stopped. I probably shouldn't have done that. So here I've inserted a scroll bar. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit format control. Uh, we're going to just do some real quick setting of properties. We, we'll never have a minimum value of zero. So I'm going to say one, one. And then over here in the cell link, I'm going to link it to this cell right here. So you see that? That's cell A3. I'm going to hit OK. Um, the, the way we're going to want to do this is we want the numbers under here. So I'm just going to show you what happens when I scroll. You see it's moving. Um, we actually want a whole list to move with it. So I'm going to say equals. I'll select A3. I'll hit plus one. Um, and then if I just drag that down to a desired length, let's say 13, I like 15. 15 is a really nice round number. And actually, as we, as I scroll down, you can see that this is moving with it. So that's um, the features that we really want. So the next part of this is um, we want to pull the first. So this is index. So I mean, this is the index of one. So we want to pull what is the project name in that first position. So for that, we'll just use index. So here I'm just going to rewrite it. I always like to keep my formulas that I'm going to use in examples up top um, for reference. So here I'm going to say index. And just to demonstrate how this works, when I've selected this entire region here, um, Excel is going to automatically fill in with table one project name. So it knows what I'm looking for. So I'll just hit comma there, go back, um, select this index here. And since I'm going to actually drag it right, I will, um, let's see here, we want to lock that A, don't we? Yep. That's right. I have to talk it through to make sure. So one cool thing about using tables um, and uh, references, just as we would drag something right and uh, in Excel, and it, it will move over to the next reference. We can do the same with tables. So here we're looking at project name. Um, now I want to bring back A, B, C, and results. So I'll just drag that right. Um, and now you can see that all of these are referring to this first index. So really, to keep, that, keep going with that theme of our table, I can just double click, and it's going to fill down. And now we have a view of everything, a nice scrollable table. Uh, there may be one problem with it. That is, you see it goes to 114 here. Um, and I said our data size was uh, 127. So the proper way to set this scroll bar is to um, subtract the total count. Let's see here. So there's 15. So what we would do is we would um, want to make the max for the scroll bar. I think it's 127 minus 15 plus 1. I know that's kind of a goofy formula, but we'll just test here to make sure um, that number's right. So in our maximum value, I'm going to write 113. Uh, let's scroll down and make sure it hits. See, it got went to 127. So just to show you why we need to do that, if I made this 114, 
here and I scroll down, oops, we have an error. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure it goes for the total length. So the formula for setting your um, scroll bar is always going to be the total. So here we have the total count minus the amount of items I'm showing in my table plus one. So that'll give you the uh, total max value. So that um, is my tip. And next week, or next episode, I should say, we'll talk about how to do the sword on it. Um, so I know right. I went through that really fast. Any questions? Dude, that scroll thingy is cool. That's in the book, yeah, too, it's, right? It's mesmerizing, isn't it? All right. So, so I think of, of an example. I think of a practical example where we might use that. Because it definitely well, looks cool. Well, I'll show you a practical example. Um, let me jump back on my screen share because I showed you that uh, piece from my book. So the issue that we have here is that, um, and I'm not going to go through this model in full, but we have a set of, a series of fake countries, and I can't show all this data at once. I mean, it's just Hi. not something I can do. So there's an assumption that you are interested in the top in the top um, performers. So there's a reason that the fact is the user may less not be that likely to ever use the scroll bar. They may be interested in the bottom performers, and that's why they would use it. Now, the issue is I don't like systems where... Now, this is showing right now because we, we talk about how to build all this in the book, but when this is final, this is all going to be gone, so um, the user's not going to be able to scroll down. The functionality is going to be built into these pieces. So this, this allows us to show... Um, more results. Now we don't always know. We don't always want that information, but sometimes we do. And in this case, this allow this provides us this functionality and it allows us to escape um, these Excel scroll bars that we don't necessarily like. Right. And sometimes you do want to see all of that data, but you can't have it all hanging out there all the time. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I get it. I like that. All right. So let's. So with four, um, you know what? I, that, let's give five because that should open minds up about what can be added onto a dashboard, right? Just just think about you know what your user needs to be able to see because dashboards can get cluttered up, and this is an unclutterer. <laughs> the great unclutterer. I like see, that. When you want to see it. Not all the time. All right. Cool. The guy who gives tips from his basement is the great uncluttered. I like that. Yeah. <laughs>